Blue Black Sakazuki is literally getting banned in like I think it's like a month, two months. I don't know what it is, but since it's getting banned, you all might as well play it. And what better way to learn it than for me? So let's go ahead and get right into it. This is the tier list I currently believe in for OPO6, and Sakazuki's at the very top of it. And before I even talk about Sakazuki, I know a bunch of people are going to be like, oh my God, why is it no there? Move it down. Why is law there? Move it up. Blah, blah, blah. Look, I hear y'all. We can talk about it a different day. But the main point here is Sakazuki is getting banned in a few months. And I think it's one of the best decks in the game right now. Sakazuki just features a lot of different removal. Obviously, it was really strong last set. But Marikumo and Moria put it over the edge this set. I think a lot of people actually undervalue Marikumo. Marikumo makes it even harder for Katakuri to deal with us. And it's a lot of bot deck that just happens to be strong in the meta right now. And Moria is absolutely insane. Playing like, what, Moria calls a 4 cost and a 3 cost, right? So getting like 15 costs worth of stuff while popping like a bunch of costs, like 12 costs worth of stuff on your opponent's board. That's, that's like, that's what did i just say 18 plus it's like 27 30 i don't know but that's crazy bro you're doing like 27 to 30 costs worth of stuff all the way uh all at once so it's absolutely insane and i do definitely think it's at the top with that being said with me making the position the meta clear let's go ahead and look at an actual sakazuki list this is the sakazuki list we're going to be working with today and i think one thing that a lot of people mess up in sakazuki is ratios so I am going to be talking about some key ratios here with some of these cards. Uh, before we get started, before people look at this list, they're like, yo, what the? Three Rebecca, three Hina? A world champion did vouch for this list. I asked him, yo, what you think about forecast? He's like, bro, just play my region final list, uh, which is different than the other list he went with. I think he went with like two lists. Uh, one of the lists was in the EBO1 meta, then this list was in pre-EBO1 meta. So I do got the stamp of approval from world champ. But let's go ahead and look at this list. Um, so for Subaru, there's not too much to say on that, right? Just Navy 2k counter, and it's another great eruption. Um, oh man, it's out of order. I don't like Rebecca being first, but first we'll talk about Rebecca at three copies. So last set, you basically had to have Rebecca at four copies because Rebecca, Hina, Luchi was your main combo. And this is going to be a similar reason why we have Hina at three, which I'll just explain now, right? It's just thanks to Moria. Our new combo in this deck is Ice Age plus Moria. And with Ice Age plus Moria... Um, so I'll just do the math for you real quick, right? So Ice Age is minus five. Sakazu Sakazuki leader skill is minus one, right? So now you've made an eight cost or two cost. Now you play Hell Mepo from your trash. You play Luchi from your trash. You just made a four cost and one cost. Bam. Luchi pops a two cost and a one cost. So you can pop 12 costs worth of stuff on your opponent's board with an Ice Age and a Luchi while getting uh 16 down worth of stuff on your board. Absolutely insane. And that's the reason why... Uh, we've considered cutting it down to three. One thing I do want to know is that when you're building this deck, let's say you want to reduce the amount of Borsalinos or uh, just something like that. I do want to say, I feel like you want to play um at least six to seven blockers in your Sakazuki, Sakazuki deck right now, at least until Yamato gets less popular because it seems like a lot of people have interest in Yamato and stuff like that. Uh, so you do definitely want a lot of blockers in your deck uh, just for Yamato. So I do want to make that stated now. Tashigi. So Tashigi is the strongest card this set, bro. So first off, look at top five. Grab a Navy is absolutely insane. And it is a one cost play going first in various matchups, including the mirror, which is very, very strong. Um, Brandu, we already know Brandu is very strong as well from last set because it's also like top three. But both of these are very strong because now we have eight low cost units that can be pumped up by Houndblaze. Even Tashigi can get to 5k attack with Houndblaze which is absolutely nuts. I do want to make it clear make it clear now. I don't think either of these cards can be reduced to less than 4. At one point uh, before the set came out, I thought Tashigi could be reduced to less than 4, but it's just too crazy, bro. Being able to be punched by Houndblaze is absolutely insane. Games where you go like Tashigi, brand new Tashigi or just stuff like that where you play a bunch of low cost units, you actually get a lot of pressure into the opponent. It's almost like we're playing Zoro with removal. It's really insane. And Tashigi being able to search for like two of like Borsalino or one of like Marikumo is also very, very strong. Neither of these can be reduced to less than four for sure. Next up, we have Helm Meppo. As I mentioned while explaining Rebecca, Helm Meppo allows us to reduce a four cost to one cost. And then uh, the Ice Age and Leader Skill can make the opposing Moria like an eight cost to a two cost, for example. So Helm Meppo is a very strong card uh guan has it at did i just call him guan <laughs> i don't know if i can call that guan wrong has it at uh has it at two in his list i personally do believe that this card can go down to uh one copy because once you do get to 10 don uh it is possible to use like greater eruption and ice age to meet the same threshold so i kind of believe it can go to one copy but 
at the same time, if your opponent, if you don't get the seven board, like I haven't explained seven boards yet, but basically when you play seven boards on curve, your opponent basically can't play Moria. But if you don't get seven boards on curve, if your opponent plays a Moria and they play out like a four cost and a two cost, it does kind of suck to not be able to pop both with Ice Age and Moria. So I kind of get it for the non done turn, but I do just want it to be known that Greater Eruption and Ice Age do meet the same threshold uh, as Home Apple when you're at 10 down, because instead you can use Suru, right? Because a uh, greater option plus Ice Age will go ahead and make the Moria one cost, and Leader Skill and Suru will make the uh, four cost, one cost as well. Y'all, I'm like tripping. The four cost, two cost, or whatever. Next up, three Hina. I explained that while explaining three Rebecca. Mainly it's because Ice Age and Moria is our main combo this set. That's the main reason we have it like that. So, four, four cost Borsalino. Um, this is going to be one that might be confusing to people. I think it's a meta call. Depending on whether Katakuri or. Warrior is more popular. That's kind of how you wage how many Borsalino you use. Personally, I think you can beat Katakuri regardless of if you see Kuzan. So I think Borsalino is a very strong going second play against Moria. Just because Moria uh, is unable to remove it. Um, but if you feel confident against uh, Moria without Borsalino, you could switch uh, switch some of the copies to Kuzan. But um, I do think this card is just so strong going second against Moria. One thing I will say, though, that is interesting is if you play Kuzan instead of Borsalino when going second... Your attacker can get removed, but you keep a bunch of cards in your hand, right? Because when you play Borsalino, the Moria is going to swing and play their Perona, right? But if you play Kuzan, you get to draw a card, so you replace the card you just played on the field, right? And on top of that, your opponent will be decentivized from playing Perona because they want to pop the Kuzan. So that is just something I want to be made known. Next up for Virgo, a very common question I hear is, why did they switch from Tashigi to Virgo? Well, it's as simple as this. Tashigi can't grab Tashigi, so that's why we switched it to Virgo. Virgo is just a Navy 2k counter that can be retrieved from Tashigi. That's pretty much it. So, for Luchi, Luchi has to be at a 4. Don't even consider taking it to 3. As long as you're playing the Ice Age version of this deck, Ice Age uh, Mori is just too important on your non non turn. If you're willing to sacrifice the consistency of seeing Ice Age Moria, you could take Luchi to less than 4, but I personally do not think that is a good deck building decision. So, I would definitely keep it at 4 copies. One Sabo, you don't really need two Sabo this set because you, thanks to Reject, not being able to add uh, the opponent's life to their hand when our life is at zero, we're able to kind of like wall out with four cost blockers while keeping our opponent at two life a lot of the times. But in those rare cases where your opponent sees too many triggers or stuff like that, Sabo's like a guarantee we just win the game against Katakuri. So we don't have the Kuzan in this list, but uh, as a one of Sabo's arguably... More impactful because the one of Kuzan you might not see on curve, but the one of Sabo can help you uh, close out at the very end of the game. Uh, two seven cost Borsalino. So people probably saw like Cody Angela, for instance, playing uh, Cody Angela, for instance, playing one seven cost Borsalino, and I do understand it. Um, I think I recall Cody saying that it's not super strong on the seven down turn in the mirror. I don't know if he was saying in the mirror against Moria, but regardless, I think this card is a super strong seven down turn play against both Moria and the mirror. Just because it stops them from playing their A cost Moria on curve, which is huge for us. Because, like, if we don't have Ice Age, Helmepo, Luchi, for example, like, their A cost Moria could really be rough. Um, so, I think 7 cost Borsalino, just decentivizing them from playing Moria on curve is just very, very strong this set. And it's also, like, a decent 7 on turn play against Katakuri as well if you are ahead. Next up, Moria. Oh, my God. This card is so nuts. I already told you all, the combo of this set is Ice Age and Moria. And... That's pretty much all there's to say about it, right? When you're going second and it's your eighth on turn, you can consider playing like a Borsalino and a brand new for advantage. So Borsalino obviously can't be KO'd. Then brand new or Tashigi can search for another Navy card. So just keep those lines in mind. On your eighth on turn, you don't have to do like Luchi Helmepo. You can just play for advantage instead, depending on the board state. Next up, two Ice Age. As I already said, the main combo of this set is Ice Age and Moria. Two copies might seem low, but we have eight different ways to search for it. So I believe it's fine. Four grid eruption. Some people think about taking this card to three, and I think that's like kind of a possibility. Um, but I just think grid eruption is too strong. When we're missing Helmepo, being able to do grid eruption and Ice Age to come with Armoria is very, very strong. On top of that, it just helps meet uh like thresholds like grid eruption and Hina, plus like uh Luchi or a Hound Blaze can clear an opposing A cost Moria which is also very, very strong. And the reason I prefer four copies is because being able to draw a card is nice. Because every time you have to use a Suru instead of like a Great Eruption, uh, in mirror matches or against Moria, you're significantly uh, down in hand advantage. So I would definitely keep that in mind. But it is a candidate to be 
taking out to three copies. Then we have four Hound Blades. Don't even consider taking this to three copies. I thought about it, but once again, Tashigi and Brand New are just too, too strong this set. And this set, a common five down turn play is to just like Hound Blades, Tashigi, swing five, then attach two down, swing five with Brand New, then swing five with Leader. So essentially, on your uh, five down turn, you're going five, 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 which is really, really nice. Lastly, we have Marikuma. I do Marikumo. I do really wish I could take this card to two. Maybe I would drop like a Sabo or something to three copies. This card is just so insane against Katakuri. Like when Katakuri high rolls and they got like Kikunojo, Kikunojo, or like Kikunojo, Kiku, it just helps come back from that because rather than giving them two free life, we just bottom deck both of them. Uh, so I would definitely consider removing like a Borsalino, adding a second one. Personally, I believe Japan and Singapore underrated how strong Marikuma was. I think everybody knows it's strong, but it's just... It's just so good against uh, stopping your opponent's high roll, and it's really, really good to combo with, like, more in the late game. Like, if you have 10 down and you go, like, Rebecca, Hina, Helmeppo, Marikumo, you're getting rid of, like, two different units. I just think just having access to plays like that all the time is very, very strong, which is why I personally prefer two copies. This is it for the deck list, but I do want to actually talk about some key matchups here, so let's go ahead and get into that. The matchup we're going to talk about here is Katakuri. Even with the addition of new cards, I believe that Katakuri is easy to consistently beat at Sakazuki unless they see too many triggers. The main thing I want to point out to y'all is that Reject cannot add life when we have zero life. So if we allow our life to go to zero at key points in the game, we can completely control the game by leaving the opponent at two life and maintaining about two blockers. If we have one life left, consult your hand as sometimes we need to leave them at three life instead because it's like we have one life, two blockers, but if we sent them to two life, they can go like reject tomorrow, tomorrow. Just kind of judge the situation. If you need to pressure, go ahead and risk reject tomorrow, tomorrow, but if you don't need to pressure, then don't do that. And then another point I want to make is stop playing Gecko Moria in this matchup. The only turn I actually think Gecko Moria is good in this matchup is on our 10 down turns, and that's still depending on how the game has progressed. I mentioned this on my Patreon guide for Moria as well, but the best thing you can do on eight down turns and stuff like that in either Moria or Sakazuki is to clear your opponent's board while establishing a blocker or or Kuzan or units like that, right? By doing this, we allow ourselves to reasonably uh, wall out our opponent with blockers in the late game if necessary, or if you establish a Kuzan, obviously make it easier to deal with your opponent's board. Uh, just stuff like that. I don't think Moria is actually as strong in the matchup as people think it is. Unless you're unable to play a blocker that turn, then I suppose... Uh, unless you're able to... If you're not able to play a blocker while clearing a unit, then I suppose Moria would be your best play in that scenario. But just know that it is not the ideal play. And then Sakazuki, I'll often pitch it in the early game. Those are the main points that I think people mess up. But I do also want to talk about some key turns against Katakuri. So on the 5 down turn of going first, I typically believe the best play is either to Great Eruption and Luchi... Yes, even if there's a Paris Pearl, I will just give them the draw. I don't mind. Or play Borsalino in Sabo. Uh, this is the same thing I did last set. I mentioned that in my OPO5 uh, Patreon guide against Katakuri, which I just I destroyed Katakuri last set. Like, it was too free. Um, but that those were the main plays I would make. But a caveat to this is that I will not play Borsalino or Sabo if they have two real attackers on the board. So basically, if they hit a trigger character and play a character out of hand, then I'm not playing Borsalino or Sabo. And then if they have... Uh, Kikunojo on the board, I will Hound Blaze instead of Greater Eruption and Luchi, uh, or I'll play a blocker. Uh, the reason is that Kikunojo is just it's just way too annoying. Unless I know I can bottom deck two cards next turn, I would rather get rid of the Kikunojo uh, immediately. One thing I do want to say about that is Greater Eruption and Luchi could uh, potentially be fine. I'm just personally unsure, but I think Hound Blaze is a way uh, safer play. Like I've never done Greater Eruption and Luchi against Kikunojo, but maybe it's better than I think it is. And then another thing I want to mention is that when you're going second, if your opponent swings five and you know you're going to play Borsalino or you know you're going to do like Brandon with Tashigi and like Hound Blaze, the peril that they're about to play, I believe that it's fine to guard the first attack. With that being said, the last tip is to be fine with taking all of your life. Uh, if necessary, like not just taking all of your life willy nilly, but don't mind going down to zero life. Just judge the board state and know whether it's fine to go to zero life or not. For example, if you have one block already and you can control their life at two and deal with Big Mom and a trigger character, then it's easy to go down to zero life. Last thing I want to say is be careful of reject popping Rebecca when you have zero life. And people may be confused of how you can keep Katakuri at two life while reasonably pressuring them. But the thing is, at that stage of the game, you create a situation where if they take the if they take a five k swing. You're able to lethal them, or if you have to keep them at two life, you can set up a big attacker like Moria or Seven Cost Borsalino while you're holding up two uh, blockers, and then you can start going for lethal on the following turn.
this is it for my intro to opio 5 sakazuki obviously I, ha I just had to give you all the katakuri tech i'm so sick of katakuri bro maybe i'll upload a gameplay video to the channel at some point i did upload some gameplay uh uh, for my patrons, for my higher tier patrons, I think I'll also post it to Patreon just so people know those games are available to uh, purchase, the, purchase if they want to see it. But I will probably post some type of gameplay on the channel at some point. I just don't know when. But with that being said, let me know what y'all think about Sakazuki and uh, Opio 6. What you guys think about Guan Rong's list. If y'all would rather have Kuzans in your deck or more Sabo stuff like that. Just let me know what y'all's thoughts are. And with that being said, I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace.